Greetings fellow men, servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to present to you a selection of assorted news from recent days from Germany and I want to start with a news item from Sachsen, Saxony. So the Social Democrat mayor of the town Freiberg in Saxony sent a bill to Angela Merkel and this is actually quite funny. So he addressed this bill personally to Angela Merkel and the bill is for the cost that um, asylum seekers actually cost in his town. So the amount in question is actually 736,000 euro. Yeah, he uh, requested that the chancellor is paying this bill now. The town has 42,000 inhabitants and they are blessed with 1,700 asylum seekers. And of course they have to pay for food and for housing and all that stuff. Angela Merkel promised uh, actually that the towns of Germany, you know, the communities will not have any additional costs. They will not have to foot the bill for taking care of the refugees. This is what she promised and he wants now to see whether or not that was a lie or if she actually will foot this bill out of federal funds. So the mayor said that since uh, autumn of 2015 they got more than a hundred asylum seekers per month. They knew that this would uh, cost some money and they um, booked everything on a separate account for full transparency so they can prove exactly how much they had to spend for our new guests. Yeah? And now he wants to have that money back from Chancellor Angela Merkel. And we will see if she is a liar or if she actually uh, lives up to the promise that she made to the mayors of German towns. So this is the mindset of social democratic mayors in Saxony. So now let's see what the news says about my favorite state in Germany, North Rhine-Westphalia. So first of all, a court in Cologne, North Rhine-Westphalia, sentenced a 16-year-old asylum seeker for two years because he met someone from a Mohammedan terrorist organization on the internet and he declared himself as a volunteer for an attack in Germany. It doesn't surprise us that the name of that youth is Mohammed, of course. Now, it is really funny that the father of this wonderful young man is of course accusing Germany of being Islamophobic because we are mixing up ISIS with uh, just Islam, which is funny, I think, because it seems like he's mixing up uh, building bombs or blowing up buildings, driving over people with a car with Islam. I always thought that was terrorism. Now, he seems to be confused, I guess. So also in North Rhine-Westphalia, in a train in Schwerte, a man who was traveling with his two young daughters, his 13-year-old son and his wife, was brutally beaten up by two to three men, quote-unquote, yeah? <laughs> as these men tried to force his two little daughters uh, to sit on their laps. As the man tried to defend his two little girls, these men became really aggressive and violent and beat him up. Now, it is funny that in all the other mainstream media outlets, um, these men are just referred to as unknown men. Whereas uh, a police speaker clearly says that um, they were migrants. And also the police has video footage of the whole affair, but they refuse to disclose this video footage to the public. Which is interesting because these are basically pedophile sex offenders and we have them on video and the police just chooses to not disclose the material um, because um, the safety of the public is clearly less important for them as not having another case on video that could possibly stir anti-immigrant sentiments in the German population. So I would say the police in North Rhine-Westphalia, they clearly have their priorities straightened out quite well. So in the beginning of the month in Bonn, a young couple from Baden-Württemberg was assaulted at night in their tent as they were camping at the Siegauer. A 31-year-old man from Ghana attacked them with a machete 
and um, he basically intimidated the man with the machete so that he was paralyzed and afraid and meanwhile raped the young woman outside of the tent. He could then escape. Fortunately, he has been found now, but uh, the thing is he was actually an asylum seeker whose uh, plea for asylum was denied, first in Italy and then also in Germany. So I always wonder why these people are not in prison when their plea for asylum is denied and why they are not uh, deported as rapidly as possible. Why they are actually allowed to run around with machetes in German parks to rape women. That is not really clear to me. But maybe the police in North Rhine-Westphalia knows exactly why. Because hey, he's from Ghana. And you know, if you look at uh, the Amnesty International Human Rights Report about Ghana, you actually see um, the same first world problems as we have here in Germany, you know, LGBT people are discriminated against, women are still not treated equally, and they theoretically still have the death sentence, even though the last execution was carried out in 1993. So all first world problems, I would say. And this comes from Amnesty International. So I really don't know why anybody from Ghana would be led into Europe unless he has a working permit or um, has a scholarship or something like that. So unless they come via official channels, I don't see why anybody from that country would be uh, led in here or accepted as an asylum seeker. And actually, he wasn't accepted as an asylum seeker. So I still wonder why they are just free to enter the country, do whatever mischief they want, even though they are clearly rejected as asylum seekers here. So I haven't made one of these videos in quite a while, but I just wanted to show you the difference between states such as North Rhine-Westphalia and uh, other areas in Germany, for example, Saxony. And to give you a little taste of the craziness that we have to deal with in Germany. So I will go for a little trip now to Saxony. Yes, I like Eastern Germany. It's very safe, it's very clean, and it's still German. It's a really great area, and if you plan to go on a trip to Germany, I would suggest you also visit Leipzig or Dresden. Enjoy the rest of your day. Servus, Kameraden.